What's up? Uh, Caboose, if you're here, feel free. I want to see if it can trigger. We'll test, give the old test run. God, I love that. <laughs> I'll do it from my side. Oh, what's up? Oh, that was amazing. Oh. That, that's just my response to every ML now. Just every ML. It's just... Oh... Beautiful. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck him. Fuck him. Eight ways to Sunday. Fuck him. Oh... Fucking, and if he ever if he gets angry about it, I'll just pick him up and put him in my pocket. <laughs> Karina, you have to be able to see it. Sorry, Karina. There's no Karina's running audio only right now. Uh, Karina, if you don't, it, it makes zero sense without fucking seeing it, Karina. But I can I can show you a clip of it later if you if you need. Um. Oh fucking a. Ugh. I just one more time. Just one more time. Mm. Anyway. Uh you can see me doing this a lot. My my chest is like my neuropathy has flared within the last like thirty minutes basically. It's fucking ridiculous, but yeah, I'm kind of like all lit up right now. I'm burning. I'm burning and tingling right now. It's a bitch. <coughs> um. Oh, fucking A. What are we going to do tonight? What are we going to do tonight? I, I sincerely thought about doing just a fucking gaming stream tonight, quite frankly. Um, but whether wanted some like theory or some shit. Um. We, we may do some, like, William Godwin, because Wither was asking for some, like, individualist uh, theory. Um, I'm not going to read Godwin himself uh, if I do, if we do it. Um, I'll be reading, like, uh, uh, Peter Marshall um, from Demanding the Impossible. I'll be reading his, like, some of what his description for William Godwin was. Um, ah, see, now that you use my name, I'll address you. Hello, Donger. Um... Um, yeah, like, actually, uh, mister, like, he's not in favor amongst fucking, um, uh, leftists, but, uh, Noam Chomsky's been obsessed with the Spanish Civil War since he was, like, 12. Um, he's written some amazing essays on it. Um, also, um, George Orwell, Eric Blair, um, Orwell's, uh, accounts, uh, was it, uh, Tales from Catalonia or whatever the fuck it's titled. Uh, it's, it, the name is escaping me. Um, so go with, uh, Orwell and, um, fucking Chomsky. Um, Orwell was there and Chomsky's been obsessed with it since he was like literally 12. Um, so yeah, you'll get a couple of different perspectives that way. Uh, Um, yeah, so, oh, let's see, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got, um, oh, yeah, I wanted to show this, this fucking image is just crazy as shit, man, um, hey, Al. uh, for those of you that follow the Punchy Boy stuff, you may know who this is already, um, this is, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, um, former, um, heavyweight champion, um, boxer, um, he is the current mayor of Kiev, uh, in Ukraine. Um, this is from his Instagram 
and friends. The city authorities are responsible for security in the capital and must be ready for any event. Today, I, the deputy heads of the Kiev City State Administration and the heads of the districts of Kiev, were in instructed at the Desna Training Center and got acquainted with the functioning of certain military units. There was also combat training and shooting. Many of us have served in the military, but sk skills need to be improved. Uh, such exercises at the Desna landfill will be regular for the city administration. The military commissar of the city, Kiev, Serhi uh, Klevlin, uh, Klevlin, sorry, sorry, those names, what are you going to do? Noted the rather high level of training of most of the participants at the expert, uh, exercises. Um, fucking... I, I, I want a, I want, I want, I want to see a video of fucking, uh, fucking Vitaly out there literally like punching fucking Russian soldiers, like just fucking rocking a motherfucker in some hand to hand <laughs> fucking dude. He's, he's yeah. Dr. Klitschko, dude, he's a fucking beast. Um, I've, I've seen, I've seen a couple of documentaries on him and his brother. I've seen them fight. Um, yeah. Motherfucker can throw hands. He can throw hands for sure. Um, but yeah, he's fucking out there. Like he's he is the current mayor of Kiev, and he's he's taking his job very, very seriously. Um, uh, preach. So yeah, I, I find that's. Um, meanwhile, on the flip side of that coin, you got fucking Lukashenko out there being a little punk bitch that he is, promising to send whole contingents of the Belarusian army to, to the border with Ukraine. The Ukrainians have started dragging troops there. Mm. Fucking. Um, either way, that is the beginning, middle, and end of the Russian segment. Now that we're done with that, we're good. Um, oh, no, there is one, ad uh, one addendum. The Irish fishermen have said that they're going to disrupt the Russian military exercise off their coast. There's a like a live fire Russian military exercise that's probably going to attack the uh, the uh, transoceanic fiber cables that are off the coast of uh, Ireland. There's some suspicion there. Um, the R Irish fishermen said, Ireland has said, you're not welcome here. And the Irish fishermen are straight up fucking doing that Irish shit. And they're like, yeah, we're going to disrupt their exercises. So look forward to some crazy fucking stories coming out of Ireland. Um, dude, caboose, fucking, it wouldn't, wouldn't be the first time the Irish fishermen, like, did some shit, so, look forward to that. Um, there, with that said, that's the beginning, middle, and end of the fucking Russian segment. I'm, I'm fucking done with it until we see some shit. Until some shit snaps off, we're pretty much, you know, it is what it is at this point. Um... Probably my favorite story from the day. Well, mm, kind of a flip, coin flip, right? Um, China has given Fight uh, has has given Fight Club a new ending. Um, this is so typically China, right? So China has insane censorship rules and that sort of thing, right? Um, so they reworked. Um, the, the film, there is a version of the movie that is available on the, uh, uh, 10 cent videos, uh, 10 cents streaming platform. Um, and since they have this sort of like, um, like anti-civ fucking anti-capitalist message, bad, bad. So in the end, um, the narrator still proceeds with killing off Durden, but the exploding building scene is replaced with a black screen and text the police rapidly figured out the whole plan and arrested all criminals success successfully preventing the bomb ex from exploding end scene that's the end of fight club in the chinese version the police just just text on a fucking screen the police rapidly figured out who, uh, the whole plan and arrested all criminals successfully preventing the bomb from exploding China, Pookie Bear, Poo Poo, yeah, fucking cowards. Ah, uh, you're welcome, AJ. Um, 
and yeah, I suppose yeah, Excel. Good luck. Uh, what am I going to because of social programs on the left? Isn't thanks for being on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries, AJ. Um, you've gone too far this time. Um, yeah, it's fucking. It's just fucking ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. L. I don't know. Fucking perfect story to plot plot our who can fuck it makes perfect sense. Um, so I've long stopped pretending. Um, yeah, but China's anti-capitalist. Yeah, aren't they? Um, fucking, um, it's, uh, fucking, it's ethno-nationalism with capitalist market, uh, with a capitalist market economy. That's, it's, well, it's ethno-nationalist dictatorship with a, uh, with a capitalist market economy. That's, that's what China is anyway. Um, so the, like I said, a coin flip for my favorite sort of story of the day, my other favorite story of the day. And as I said, I, I've long stopped pretending like to, to like blah, 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 fucking, oh, well, but blah, insert your own fucking couching terminology here. Right. Um, anybody see the Bostonian fucking, um, uh, fucking COVID transplant patient douchebag, uh, fucking dudes up for a heart transplant and he refuses to get a COVID vaccine. So they pulled him from the list. Yeah, and the fucking right wing fucking dude on the conspiracy subreddit on Reddit, they're like, ah, you know, and people, everybody's like, dude, do you know the checklist you have to go through to get a transplant? Dude, if you're going up for a liver transplant, if you have a beer, you're done. You're off the list. It's that simple, right? Like, it is what it is. They're about to put you on the world's strongest drugs, right? Like immunosuppressant drugs that you post transplant immunosuppressant drugs are insane. All right. You are in for a lifetime of pharmaceutical care. You are in a lifetime of like managed health care at that point. You are telling the exact same people who are going to be in charge of one of the most intense things that we do to a human being. By the way, they're going to crack your fucking chest open like you're a goddamn bird, like a goddamn chicken and you're being spatchcocked. They're going to crack your fucking chest open, by the way, and yank out that fucking heart and put in a new one. You are telling those exact same people that are telling you to get the fucking COVID vaccine that you don't trust them and what they are telling uh, in their, uh, their advice and in their expertise, what the, uh, uh, that they are rendering upon you. You are telling them you do not trust them. And yet you're going to let them crack your chest open, yank out your fucking heart, put a new one in, and then put you on some of the most potent medications we mankind has for the rest of your life. Fuck you. You deserve to die. You don't get a heart. You don't get a heart. It's a waste of a heart. Of course they put, took you off the fucking transplant list. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Oh, uh, a commodity. That's a whole thing. China does like alternative like edits for movies all the time. Up to and including like um, censoring black people. Um, like fucking, what was it? One of the Marvel movies. They took the uh, Chad Boswick or whatever the fuck his name was. Black Panther guy. Um, and they fucking put a mask on him in the cover, like, cause on the, like the poster, um, Black Panther had his mask off for like the Western posters, but China was like, put the mask on him because we're fucking racist pieces of shit and we don't like black people. Sorry. Nobody wants to talk about that, but China's a bunch of fucking ethno-nationalist racist pieces of shit who really, really, really don't like black people. Speak to it. Uh, speak to a Chinese nationalist sometime. Um, Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, they fucking told this guy, you're off the fucking transplant list. And the right lost their goddamn minds. They lost their fucking minds to like, oh, this is fucking medical. Fuck it. This is, uh, fuck it. Yeah, it was, uh, oh, I don't know. I've never, I, I don't, I barely, I, I know John Tron is like some schlubby YouTuber. That's, I've never watched him. I don't know these people for the, for the most part. So I can't really speak to it. Um, Yeah, caboose. Yeah, those immunosuppressant drugs are terrifying. Uh, three of my coworkers are out sick with COVID, and two of the three coworkers I uh, I left are saying they won't wear masks and won't get boosters. Oh fuck them, caboose. Um, I 
maybe Cupcake. I, I don't. I don't know. Never watched him. I don't know. I, I think I could maybe pick him out of a lineup. Maybe. I'm really bad with faces. I have, like, partial facial blindness. I just remember he's kind of schlubby, random white dude with dark hair. Kind of fat face. I, I don't... I don't know who John Tron is. <laughs> uh, there's got to be some other nationality that's at least chill with people across the border. Uh, across the board, right? Uh... Not in the Asian areas, whether. Um... Asia's pretty fucking racist. Asia's a weed with a few right wing beliefs. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Wither, dude. Asia's ra super racist. Wither, like it's just the, the truth of the matter. Um, especially towards like African and black people in general. Um, yeah, they tried to blame COVID on uh, on Africans when it first hit. Like that was the thing China did. Like that's that's some shit nobody likes to talk about. Um, when COVID first fucking hit. China tried to blame it on the African immigrants. That's straight up. They tried to kick them out of the fucking country for it, too, by the way. Um, yeah. Yeah, fucking, dude, dude China, Asia in general, super fucking racist. Like, super fucking racist. Um, yeah. Um, wired bookworms guy next to each other, and guy would probably be wrong. Uh, let's see, wired bookworms guy. I'm going to look him up. I'm literally going to put in fucking wired bookworms guy. And see what comes up. Is this him? Viva, Viva, Viva! Is this him? Is, is this is this the Wired Bookworms guy? John Tron. I, I I think I know what this guy looks like. Yeah, yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen I've seen this person before. Shitty beard, fucking goofy face, fucking yeah. I've seen him before. Um. I mean, okay, so John Tron doesn't wear glasses. That's about it. Um, they're the same picture. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. As far as I could tell, that was John Tron with glasses. Oh. Uh, uh, love it. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, sleep well, AJ. Catch you later. Hey, Puka. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, mm. like I said, it's gonna be a short stream. It's gonna be a short stream tonight. Uh, we're not gonna do a shit ton. I refuse to get drug into the like late AMs and shit like that. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, oh yeah, that's typical. That's par for the course. Um, yeah, apparently the fucking snowflakes on the right are all pissed because of that fucking Biden hot mic uh, moment, and I don't give two shits either way. Fuck Biden. Fuck 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 Steve Ducey. Fuck the snowflakes on the right. Fuck the leftists who are reveling in it. Fuck fuck all of them. That's fucking. It's a non-issue, but that story just keeps popping up, popping up. Um, John Tron is anti-immigration and doesn't like welfare. He also did some COVID vax conspiracies on Twitter. He says he said some very stupid things and a bit problematic, but not even to danky little levels. Yeah, right, fair enough. Hey, Joe, what's up? Um, let's see. Yeah, none of that matters. None of that matters. None of this. But Jesus fucking Christ. Israeli soldiers bound and gagged an 80-year-old Palestinian for over an hour before he died. Yeah, it sounds about right for the Israelis. Fucking, or I should say the Israeli military, just to fucking, I'm sure there's some perfectly fine Israelis that, like, they're fucking, um, who's their guy? One of their, like, security ministers or something, like, constantly gets in trouble and had to, like, um, yeah, the public security minister. Um, this dude had to be given like um, private security because of all the death threats on him from the Israelis, not the Palestinians. The Israeli public security minister straight up said that attacks by Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank are organized terrorism. Um, and he's gotten so many fucking death threats from uh, from Israelis over that issue. He he has like a private security force. Um yeah, just to protect him from his own people. 
Uh, so, yeah, like, good on him. They're not, they're not, they're not all the same. Uh, she got you out, not much, she got up an hour ago. Nice. Um, real shit to be on. Yeah. 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 Uh, Oh, there's a new variant, by the way. Um, I mean, you know, check your watch. It's new variant time. <laughs> uh, 40 countries, something like that. Yeah. New COVID variant detected in at least 40 countries. Yay. Oh, I don't know uh, who all y'all, uh, which all y'all fucking be writers and shit like that. But this motherfucker right here. This is Horace Hart. Um, this motherfucker right here, right? If you if you are a writer or you're in college and you deal with English, this motherfucker right here. This is the inventor of the Oxford comma. <laughs> so, so you know, for those of you that are writers, those of you that deal with the English language, this motherfucker right here created the Oxford comma. Whether, whether you feel one way or another about that. You may love him. You may hate him. Um, even when someone heard that Biden called Ducey afterwards, they were still just upset that he swore. Oh, fuck them. They, they loved it when Trump said all that fucking shit. Like, they, they were fine with Trump swearing up a storm and saying people should get fucked up and shit like that. Fuck those hypocrites. Oh, fuck them. Um, The smart people will roll the probability on the likelihood of a super COVID that kills at least ten times as many people. I mean, you know, uh, I don't fuck with the Oxford comma. I, oh God, I'm not. Okay. So my schooling didn't teach me to use it, but I actually prefer the Oxford comma methodology. Um, <laughs> nice Crimson. Um, I, 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 it makes more sense given the sort of like, vagaries of the English language. Uh, commodity. My fucking neuropathy has flared up in the last, like, 45 minutes. It's half an hour when I started the stream, but the last 45 minutes of, like, it's literally up to my chest. My legs are burning. My chest is burning. It's fucking... Dude, I'm, I'm literally just flared up right now. And by the way, my neuropathy does flare that quickly. It goes, like, 0 to 60 in, like, minutes. It's fucking ridiculous. I can now rent NFTs. Oh, shit. That's fucking... That's baller. What can I rent an F NFT? Um, fucking, uh, vamp, <clears throat> um, vampire, uh, fucking vampire survivors put an NFT in. For those of you who know the game that I introduced, um, why does AJ cost so many Soros bucks? Cause AJ is worth it. Um, fucking AJ is totally worth it. <clears throat> um, let me hang on. I got, I got, you know what? I'll be, I'll be fucking nice. I'll be fucking nice. Where's my receiver? Uh, no, I need the deck, not the receiver, dummy. All right, let me pause the music. <sighs> Here you go. Uh, connect. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. <laughs> anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now... I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. All right, well, let me see if I can I can line this up. All right. Oh, shit. I fucked that up. Bad time. Okay, so he fucking... All right. Oh shit, it's uh, even my stream deck is like on time down for that. All right, give me a sec. There we go. Yeah, I think I lined that up. 
I can't look at the screen when I'm doing it. I just have to fucking remember. I fucking do this way, this way, up this, this way. Um, I think I got it though. Um, yeah, <laughs> boy AJ spitting factual once. Um, yeah, close enough. <laughs> I'm not gonna, not gonna put any more work than that into it. Frankly, um. Oh. oh, Jesus! I will eat your leftist ass. That's my favorite AJ quote. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah. Fucking none of that matters. None of that matters. None of that matters. None of that matters. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Joe. That sucks. Um, but I mean, I can't. I can't unlock your emo for you, Joe. But I can do this for you. <laughs> I really do love that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I get way too much fucking joy out of that. Uh, uh, Caboose did the uh, the Photoshop edit uh, on on for the the cutout and stuff like that, and I fucking animated it this morning, and that's that's really has by the way the. <laughs> That's really has. That's really has. He's been pitched up and sped up. Um, but yeah, it just tells me to get a drink. Donger. Just, just tells me to get a drink. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, he's, he's, it's, it's, I was going to use the, we are living in socialism because our economy is social in nature, but he's way too subdued. He's way too drawn out and there's not enough material there once I fucking sped it up to fit six seconds. Um, so, um, what it actually is is um oh crimson i may do that crimson that's a good idea oh shit crimson i wish i had thought of that okay i may revise that there there may be a revision there may be a fucking bonk to him um <clears throat> yeah oh yeah joe you oh you weren't here for it joe 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 i will oh joe oh joe you are living in joe 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 my joe my joe my joe 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 Joe, 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 you have to see it. Here you go, Joe. We are living in socialism, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. And we're living in fucking socialism because the primary driving force of our economy is social in nature. That's, it makes sense. Because reasons. He's been getting a little more fucking wacky and deranged. Yeah. Um. Fucking do we have, do we have, um. Oh, this is back away. So this is going to be the last night, right? This is going to be last night. Jesus Christ. This fucking, um. Let me try and find it. Okay, that was tonight. That was with Cat. Okay. There's that. Okay, it's going to be above that. There it is. All right, here we go. I knew it. I'll find it eventually.
economy. Um, sometimes I wake up with my 100% natty physique and understand my haters. It's just not fair. How could a man talk so much shit and be so mean and still look like this? I just get away with it. By the way, he's like 5'4". He's like 5'4", by the way. Like, legit. He's like 5'4". Um, he's super fucking sharp. He's skinny fat. Uh, yeah, he's skinny fat. Like, you can see the, the, the pudge coming over. You can see the pudge. He's never... He skips leg day all the time. He, he clearly skips leg day. All he does is his bicep and tricep. He never does core. Right? Like, this is... Yeah, and he's got titties. Again, I mean, homie, don't brag. Don't brag, man. <laughs> don't brag. Oh... Oh, Excel. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, total beta shit. Total fucking beta shit. Um. Uh, fucking did, uh, there we go. Um. Yeah, no, he skips leg day. 100% skips leg day. Uh, so, yeah, that's. Yeah, was he fucking posting that shit on fucking Twitter? And so. Like, um, you, uh, if you're trying to get the anarchy symbol by your name, you got to fucking sub. That's, that's where the, the A's come into play. Yeah. Those are, those are sub badges. Um, if you see a pink one, that's 12 months or, or more. That's, that's a year's worth of sub or more. If you, uh, uh, at the, at the pink one, uh, blue, uh, red is one month. Blue is three uh, fucking green is six, and I think I got like like another color in there. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, yellow is nine. Yeah, that's that's where the anarchy symbols come from. Those are subs. Um, an out of control SpaceX rocket is going to cl uh, collision course with the moon. Oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, the first unintentional case of space junk hitting the moon. <laughs> mm. Elon Musk already fuck fucking up shit. Just pissing his fucking trash everywhere. Um, I didn't want you. I didn't ask you so, but um, can we find a SpaceX for littering? Littering and littering and littering and um, yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're we're throwing shit at the moon now. Fucking ridiculous. Um All right. Commodity, thank you. Commodity with the finish. Littering and smoking the reefer. Fuck yeah, commodity. <clears throat> No, it's completely rational, Gatine. It's completely rational. He's a fucking. He's absolutely a reprehensible human being. Totally worth. Uh, totally worth you uh, disliking. All right. Um. All right. Uh, Wither. I will read you a segment. 
on William Godwin uh, from Demanding the Impossible, and then we're going to move on to something else. Um, Wither wanted some individualist theory. I'm not going to get into Godwin's theory specifically, but I will read us an excerpt or three. I'll skip around um, from the, some of the like the the sort of like because uh, uh, Peter Marshall does this sort of like about the person and about some of their stuff, and then like you know the the, the philosophy and you know ethics and that sort of thing, the politics that behind the individual. All right, so I'll I'll skip around and just cover some of the the basics for you, whether. Um, damage to private property is one fucker that claimed them. Yeah, it's, it doesn't. The outer space treaties uh, dictate that that's not a not a thing. <clears throat> so, um, all right. I swear to God, you better be here, Wither, for this shit. If I'm doing this for you, Wither, you better fucking be here. That's all I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll do we'll do a little of this, and then we'll move on to something else. Um. For those who don't know, uh, okay, well, I mean, William Godwin was the uh, first to give, uh, like, a clear statement of anarchist principles. Straight up. He's, like, the first anarchist. Outside of, like, anarchy and, like, indigenous communities using heterarchical organizing styles and shit like that, right? The first anarchist is generally, like, considered to be William Godwin. Um, so, like, he, he is the first one to actually write it down clearly and put, like, two to word the anarchist theory. Um, he blazed the trail uh, for many, many anarchists. Um, so, basically, uh, one of um, uh, this guy, um, fucking William Hazlitt, who wrote, um, as a son in the firmament of reputation, no one was more talked of, more looked up to, more sought after, and whereby and wherever liberty, truth, and justice was the theme. His name was not far off. No work in our time gave such a blow to the philosophical mind of the country as the celebrated inquiry concerning political justice. Now, if you're not familiar, an inquiry concerning political justice was Godwin's, I mean, one of Godwin's seminal works. The prime minister at the time, William Pitt, considered prosecuting the author, but decided against it on the grounds that a, quote, three guinea book could never do much harm among those who had not three shillings to spare. Um, in fact, Political Justice, another one of Godwin's works, was sold for half the price then. Uh, and many, band, uh, many workers banded together to buy it by subscription. Pirated editions appeared uh, across the islands, Ireland and Scotland, that sort of thing. There was literally a sufficient demand um, to uh, to revise the work in 1796 and 1798 for in cheaper editions. Um, it influenced labors of the emerging uh, influenced leaders of the emerging labor movement at the time, like uh, Thelwall and Pace. Um, but like Wordsworth, Southey, and Coleridge, uh, like aspiring poets, all took up. Um, this, these, this, his words. So <clears throat> the very success of Godwin's work, despite its philosophical weight and elegant style shows how near the Britain of the 1790s was to revolution. The war declared by Pitt on revolutionary France, however, soon raised the specter of British patriotism. His systematic persecution of the radical leaders and the introduction of gagging acts in 1794 eventually silenced and then broke the reform movement for a generation. Godwin came boldly to the defense of civil liberties and of his radical friends in a series of eloquent pamphlets, but... By the turn of the century, he too had fallen into the one common grave with the cause of liberty. Thrown up by the vortex of the French Revolution, he sunk when it subsided. More people in polite society, de Quincey wrote, felt of Godwin with the same alienation and horror as of a ghoul or a bloodless vampire. But not all was lost. It was with inconceivable emotions that the young Percy, uh, Percy Shelley found in 1812 that Godwin was still alive. And he went on not only to elope with his daughter, but to become the greatest anarchist poet by effectively putting Godwin's philosophy to verse. Robert Owen, sometimes called the father of British socialism, became friendly soon after and acknowledged Godwin as his philosophical master. In the 1830s and 40s, at the height of the ad their agitation, the Owenites and Chartists reprinted many extracts from Godwin's work in their journals and brought out a new edition of Political Justice in 1842. 
Through the early British socialist thinkers, especially William Thompson and Thomas Hodgkins, Godwin's vision of an ultimate withering away of the state and of a free and equal society began to haunt the Marxist uh, imagination. Godwin, at first sight, appears an unlikely candidate for the tide of first and greatest philosopher of anarchism. He was born in 1756 in Wesbeck, the capital of North Cambridgeshire, the seventh of 13 children. His father was an obscure independent minister who moved to the tiny village of Gustwick in northern Norfolk soon after William's birth. But a strong tradition of rebellion existed in that area. There had not only been a peasant's revolt against the land enclosures in 1549, but during the English Revolution, East Anglians had formed the backbone of the independent movement. Godwin's father would sit in his meeting house in Cromwell's chair, so named because it is so said to have been a gift from the leader of the English Revolution. Godwin, moreover, was born into a family of dissenters who rejected the Church of England and its articles of faith. They defended at all costs the right of private judgment. Although officially tolerated since 1689, the dissenters were unable to have their births registered to enter national universities or to hold public office. The result was that they reformed a separate and distinct uh, cultural group and made up a permanent opposition to the state of England. God, uh, <clears throat> Godwin was steeped in this tradition. His grandfather had been a leading dissenting minister. His father was a minister, and he aspired from an early age to follow in their footsteps. As a boy, Godwin was deeply religious and intellectually precocious. It, deci- it was decided to send him at the age of 11 to become the sole pupil of a Reverend Samuel Newton in the great city of Norwich. But it was to prove the most formative period of Godwin's life. Newton's harsh treatment of Godwin left him with a hatred of punishment and tyranny. I'm going to put an addendum here. This isn't Peter Marshall speaking. This is Kai. This is how um, Kropotkin was created as well. Kropotkin was a um, <clears throat> um, was a uh, Russian prince. He was a Russian aristocrat. And he went through the Russian regimentation system and the uh, Russian military forced service. And he came out the other side an anarchist. This is one of the best ways to create anarchists. Expose people to actual hierarchical tyranny. Show it to them. Up close and personal. Let them experience it. And they come out the other side. If they have the proper education for it, if they have the the brain in their head, they'll come out there and say, go, there's got to be a better, better way than that, right? Godwin was one of them. <clears throat> but Newton was also an extreme Calvinist. We love Calvinists, don't we? Calvinism. Oh, it's so fucking brilliant. A follower of the teachings of Robert Sandman and a pi- and the pious Godwin soon adopted his new tutor's creed. Sandman laid great stress on reason. Grace was to be achieved not by good works or faith, but by the rational perception of truth, the right or wrong judgment of the understanding. The Sandman's, Sandman's, uh, wait, uh, Sandman, uh, Sandman, uh, Sandman, Ian's. Sandman Ian's, sorry, I had to sound that one out for it, uh, interpreted the uh, teachings of the New Testament literally. They sought to practice brotherly love and share their wealth with each other. They were also democratic and egalitarian, both rejecting majority rule in favor of consensus and annihilating the distinctions of civil life within the sect. All men and women, they affirmed, were equally fit to be saved or damned. Godwin went on to pull the Calvinist God down from the heavens and to assert the innocence and predictability of man, but he retained much of the social and economic teachings of the Sandemanians. He not only traced his excessive stoicism and condemnation of the private affections to his early Calvinism, but specifically held those people responsible for his belief and rational judgment as the source of human action. On leaving Newton's intellectual and emotional hothouse at the age of 17, Godwin entered the dissenting academy at Hoxton, one of the best centers of higher education in 18th century England. Here, he received a thorough grounding in Locke's psychology, which he presented the mind as a blank sheet in the Newtonian sciences, which pictured the world as a machine governed by natural laws, and in Hutchison's ethics, which upheld benevolence and utility as the cornerstone of virtue. At the same time, Godwin formed a belief in necessity, that is to say that all actions are determined by previous causes, and in immaterialism, that is, the external world is created by the mind. 
these twin pillars of his thought underwent little subsequent change. Although the Tudors were extremely liberal in religion and... Uh, um, what am I seeing here? Oh, okay. Um, although his tutors were extremely liberal in religion and politics and encouraged free inqui inquiry, Godwin left Hoxton as he entered. He tried to become a minister, but three times he was rejected by rural congregations in southern England. It proved a period of reassessment and self-examination. His intellectual development was rapid. The political debate raging over the American War of Independence at the time soon led him to support the Whig opposition to the war, and a reading of the Latin historians and Jonathan Swift made him a Republican overnight. The most important influence was to come from a reading of the French philosophies. In Rousseau, he read that man is naturally good but corrupted by institutions, that private property was the downfall of mankind, and that man was born free but everywhere was in chains. From Helvetius, to de Holbach, he learned that all men are equal and society should be formed for human happiness. When he closed the covers of their books, his whole worldview had changed. They immediately undermined his Calvinist view of man. Although for the time being, he became a follower of uh, Socinus, who uh, denied the divinity of Christ in original sin, rather than an atheist. Realizing that he was not cut out to be a minister, Godwin decided to go to London and try to earn his living by teaching and writing. In quick succession, Godwin wrote A Life of William Pitt, two pamphlets supporting the Whig cause, a collection of literary imitations, and three short novels. Eager to get rid of his sermons, he published a, a selections, uh, he published a selections as Sketches of History in 1784, but not without the observation that God in the Bible acts like a, quote, political legislator in a theocratic state, despite the fact that he has not a right to be a tyrant. Godwin, in this respect, was deeply impressed by Milton's depiction of the devil in Paradise Lost. A being of considerable virtue, as he later wrote, who rebelled against his maker because he saw no sufficient reason for the extreme inequality of rank and power which had been created. He continued to rebel after his fall because a sense of reason and justice was stronger in his mind than a sense of brute force. The most important political work of this period was undoubtedly an account of the seminary, which Godwin intended to open in Epsom for the, destruction of, uh, for the instruction of 12 pupils in the Greek, Latin, French, and English languages. Classical education, folks. It's a whole other ballgame. Although no pupils turned up, the prospectus remains one of the most incisive and eloquent accounts of real libertarian and uh, libertarian and progressive education. It shows Godwin believing that children are not only born innocent and benevolent, but that the tutor should foster their particular talents and treat them gently and kindly. The ex-Tory student and ex-Calvinist minister had come to recognize that the state of society is incontestably artificial. The power of one man over another man must always be derived from convention or from conquest. By nature, we are equal. The necessary consequence is that government must always depend upon the opinion of the governed. Let the most oppressed people under heaven once change their mode of thinking, and they are free. Government is very limited in its power of making men either virtuous or happy. <clears throat> it is only in the infancy of society that it can do anything considerable. In its maturity, it can only direct a few of our outward actions. But our moral dispositions and character depend very much, perhaps entirely, upon education. Five years before the French Revolution, Godwin had already worked out the main outlines of political justice. His friendship with the radical playwright Thomas Holcroft further persuaded him to become an atheist and confirmed the evils of marriage and government. Since none of his early works brought him much money, Godwin was obliged to work in Grub Street for the Whig journals to earn a living. He wrote about the oppression carried out by Pitt's government in Ireland and India. In a history of, Re of the revolution in Holland, he prophesied in 1787 that the flame of liberty first sparked off by the American Revolution had spread and that a new republic of the purest kind was about to spring up in Europe. When the French Revolution broke out in 1789, 
it was not entirely unexpected. Godwin was 33, and no less than William Blake's and William Wordsworth, Wordsworth's, his heart beat high with great swelling sentiments of liberty. He did not remain idle. idle. <clears throat> when Thomas Paine's publisher faltered, Godwin helped bring out the first part of Rights of Man. He also wrote a letter at this time to the Whig politician Sheridan, declaring that liberty leaves nothing to be admired but talents and virtue. Give to a state but liberty enough, and it is impossible that vice should exist in it. As his daughter Mary later observed, Godwin's belief that no vice could exist with perfect freedom, and that the very basis of his system, the very keystone of the arch of justice by which he desired to knit together the whole human family. Burke's reflections on the revolution in France had triggered off a pamphlet war, but Godwin decided to rise above the controversies of the day and to write a work which would place the principles of politics on an immovable basis. As a philosopher, he wanted to consider universal principles, not practical details. Uh, <clears throat> he therefore tried to condense and develop whatever was best and most liberal in political theory. He carefully marshaled his arguments and wrote in a clear and precise style. The result was an inquiry concerning political justice and its influence on general virtue and happiness, published 1793. As Godwin observed in his preface, the work took on a life of its own. And as his inquiries advanced, his ideas became more precipitous and digested. He developed a theory of justice which took the production of the greatest sum of happiness as its goal, and went on to reject domestic affections, gratitude, promises, patriotism, positive rights, and accumulated property. His changing view of government further gave rise to an occasional inaccuracy of language. He did not enter the work he acknowledged without being aware that government by its very nature counteracts the improvement of individual mind, but he understood the proposition more completely as he proceeded and saw more distinctly into the nature of the remedy. The experience of the French Revolution had already persuaded him of the desirableness of a, uh, of a government of the simplest construction, but his bold reasoning led him to realize that humanity could be enlightened and free only with government's utter annihilation. Godwin thus set out, the very close, uh, uh, set out very close to the English Jacobins like Paine, only to finish a, uh, finish a convinced and outspoken anarchist the first great exponent of society without government. Give me a minute, honey. Political justice was not only the work to, uh, was not only the work to bring Godwin instant fame. In 1794, he published his novel, Things as They Are, or The Adventures of Caleb Williams. A gripping story of flight and pursuit intended to show how the spirit and character of the government intrudes itself into every rank of society. It too was to be hailed as a great masterpiece. It's not only a work of brilliant social observation, but may be considered the first thriller and first psychological novel which anticipates the anxieties of modern existentialism. Godwin's Political Justice was published a fortnight after Britain declared war on revolutionary France, at a time when the public was panic-struck with all the prejudices of the human mind in arms against it. Pitt's government tried to crush the growing reform movement by arresting its leaders, Holcroft, Holmtook, Delwall, and others for high treason. Godwin sprang to their defense in some well-argued cursory strictures. Partly due to the influence of Godwin's pamphlet, a jury threw out the charge. Again, when the government introduced its notorious gagging acts to limit the freedom of speech, assembly, and the press, Godwin responded with the incisive considerations, signed by a lover of order. The pamphlet was mainly a denunciation of Pitt's policy of repression, but it also criticized the methods of the new political associations, particularly the London Corresponding Society for simmering the cauldron of civil contention through its lectures and mass demonstrations. While Godwin was as vigorous and uncompromising as ever in defending hard-won liberties, he believed that genuine reform was best achieved through education and enlightenment in small independent circles. Wither, are you starting to notice some? Are, are, are you starting to notice some stuff? Like it's it's developing, Wither. But are you are you noticing that maybe Kai read some Godwin along the way? Um, <clears throat> such circles anticipated the affinity groups of later anarchists. Um, his criticisms of the inflammatory methods of his contemporaries, however, meant that he was bitterly attacked by the Jacobin agitators like Thelwall. 
In the meantime, Godwin had become intimate with Mary Wollstonecraft, the first major feminist writer who had asserted in her celebrated vindication of the uh, rights of women that mind has no sex and that women should become rational and independent beings rather than passive and indolent mistresses. Although Godwin was dis, uh, diffident and occasionally pedantic, Wollstonecraft recognized him as an independent spirit who was capable of deep emotion and of high thinking. They soon became lovers, but aware of the dangers of cohabitation, lived apart. Wollstonecraft had an illegitimate daughter by a previous relationship and had experienced the full force of prejudice in the rigid society of the late 18th century. She had already tried to commit suicide twice. When she became pregnant again with Godwin's child, she felt unable to face a further ostracism and asked Godwin to marry her. Although Godwin had condemned the European institution of marriage as the most odious of all monopolies, he agreed. His enemies were delighted by this apparent turnabout, and the accusation that he had a hot head and cold feet has reverberated ever since. Godwin, however, as a good anarchist, believed that there are no moral rules which should not give way to the urgency of particular circumstances. In this case, he submitted to an institution which he still wished to see abolished out of regard for the happiness of an individual he valued. After the marriage ceremony, he held himself bound no more than he was before. Although governmental terror was the order of the day, Godwin still believed that truth would eventually triumph over error and prejudice. He therefore revised carefully political justice, a new edition which appeared in 1796, Wollstonecraft had helped him recognize the importance of the feelings as a source of human action and a central place of pleasure in ethics. Godwin also made his arguments more consistent by showing from the beginning of the work the evils of government and by clarifying the section on, uh, on property. Kropotkin was therefore wrong to follow De Quincey in thinking that Godwin had retracted many of his beliefs in the second edition. It not only retained the out great outlines of the first, but offered a more substantial and convincing exposition of his anarchism. In the third edition of 1798, he further remo removed a few of the crude and juvenile remarks and added a summary of principles. While revising the second edition of Political Justice, Godwin also wrote some original reflections upon education, manners, and literature, which were published as a collection of essays called The Inquirer. The works contain some of the most remarkable and advanced ideas on education potentially ever written. Keep in mind, this is Peter Marshall writing this. Peter Marshall is no fucking slouch when it comes to these sorts of summaries. It may actually be some of the most pedagogically important writing, writings. Godwin not only argues that the aim of education should be to generate happiness and to develop a critical a critical and independent mind, but suggests that the whole scheme of authoritarian teaching could be done away with to allow children to learn through desire at their own pace and in their own way. Godwin's thoughts on economics in the Acquirer are no less challenging. Indeed, the, uh, the essay of, of Avarice and Profusion offered such a trenchant account of exploitation based on the labor theory of value that it inspired Malthus to write his tirade against all improvements, the essay on the principle of population. Godwin's devastating survey of trades and professions in a capitalist society also led the Chartists to reprint it in 1842 at the height of their agitation. I think I'm going to stop there. Um... He did it, the long and short of it. Um, the long and short of it is that he basically becomes one of the most influential people um, through the ripple effect of um, within the like British, um, the French British, uh, the French Revolutionary period within Britain and within the Isles. He did manage to eke out a meager living um, from his writing. Um, he took a pension at age, uh, oh, fucking 70, something like that. He was given an official title, uh, and lodgings, uh, next to the houses of parliament. Um, it was, it was a, a, a brilliant irony, uh, for Godwin that he, he looked after what he would, uh, what he considered to be an antiquated institution, uh, in his final days. Um, and, um. Uh, he may have William Godwin is potentially responsible for the burning of the uh, the the um, uh, the the houses of Parliament during the Great Fire. Okay, so here's the story. <clears throat> 
William Godwin lived, was given a pension to live next door to the Houses of Parliament in part, uh, and part of his, his um, job was he was responsible for maintaining the firefighting equipment uh, of the day. When the Great Fire broke out, William Godwin absconded to a theater with the firefighting equipment and let the House of Parliament burn. Now, there's an argument to be made that he would not have been able to do anything. The fire was too great. There was nothing that could be done. But he didn't try. He literally just was like, well, that fucker's going to burn. <clears throat> and he just walked away. So it is said in some circles that Godwin succeeded where Guy Fox failed. Uh, so there you go. Um, <laughs> it, it is, yeah. Um, it is quite, he's quite an interesting individual, um, when it comes down to it. Yeah. He didn't start the fire. He didn't start it. Um, so there you go. Um, wither. That's just some of just like, you know, the, the sort of Mar Marshallian uh, description of some of William Godwin. Now, if you want to read William Godwin after that with her, I would encourage you to. He's one of the most influential writers of that period, if not ever. Um, also, he's um, the father, like he's the he's the father of Frankenstein. Right. Like Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. He's a he's her dad. Um, so there you go. Um, all right. Uh, now, honey, uh, honey, <laughs> fucking just calling you that honey vinegar. Um, you had questions. You, 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 I know you like way back, way, way fucking back. Um, you, you were like, I have my hand up. Um, only facts. I'm here just spamming lyrics. Uh, the question shall not be answered. Uh, Rob is writing as well. You told me, uh, yeah. Um, he's 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 influential. Um, um, oh god. Well, I mean, ask. Um, I mean, ask. Form your question, honey, and ask it. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, and, uh, um, uh, wither one of the things to note about Godwin, he was a, uh, he was a consistent and constant utilitarian. Um, he, he was, he was an act utilitarian, not a rule utility rule utilitarian. So, so, you know, as far as like his ethical, um, his ethical framework goes, and where to place him in the various like spectrums of like, you know, actors in general. Um, yeah, he was, he was an act utilitarian consistently and constantly, uh, after he had his sort of awakening moments. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Super interesting dude. Um, and yeah, he may have, he may have, he may have kind of sort of burned down the house of parliament. <laughs> He <laughs> just he fucked off. He fucking took the fire gear and went to a fucking theater nearby. I was like, <laughs> mm, oh what? It's on fire? Mm, I didn't notice. That's a shame. Well, do they have any firefighting gear over there? Hmm, interesting. Yeah. He's an anarchist. What are you going to do? <laughs> I know. Not my dear. Uh, so during the leading days of the French Revolution, the wage gap between the featherheads and the working class was dire. At this point, American billionaires are going into space for a hobby, paying less for a speech of wisdom today. And then comes to all the culture. I was going to be the question with this opening thought. It more opens dialogue. This question would take hours to dissect. Um, I mean, there's a story going around right now. Um, 
that you you remind me of, honey. Um, apparently, uh, John Stewart cornered Jeff Bezos at a at like a, a a gala one time, and told him that like you know like you know you created a recipe for a revolution, right? Like people want more from life than just running errands for rich people. That's a recipe for a revolution. Um, yeah, I do think, uh, with that said, um, I do think that the left, uh, in general, just the, 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 the leftist milieu across the board globally, not even just, uh, not even just, uh, fucking the U S um, the leftist milieu in general, um, is a little too over, a little too obsessed and has overly romanticized the meta narrative of the French revolution. Um, so cupcake, I don't know why baked cupcake. Thanks for the follow. Um, it didn't pop. I don't know why I saw it on the side though. Um, uh, so I mean, because <sighs> public, but trickle down Kai, I have no idea what I was talking about public. We're just coming off of a, a, a reading of Peter Marshall's, uh, sort of like summary of William Godwin as an individualist anarchist and the father of like you know, the first person to ever write down anarchist principles, really, outside of, like, indigenous anarchy versions, right? Um, and Honey Vinegar in chat was asking about the French Revolution vis-a-vis -vis modern uh, wealth disparities and the wealth disparities that occurred at the time, and what are some of the ramifications thereof? Um, so... Um, yeah, I, I, I do think that there's, there's definitely um, a, a parallel or at least there's there's an allegory to be told, right? There's 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 a metaphor there uh, for the current uh, wealth disparities. Um, but I also think that the labor movement in America and the modern, oh, uh, this is what you need. I'll just fucking plug some shit here. Uh, honey vinegar, you need to read my tent poles, uh, the three tent poles of American oppression. Um, because the, the situation with the, the revolution in, uh, exclamation tent poles in chat, uh, for the link. Um, there you go. Thank, thank you, Voss. Um, so the, the systems that are at play, um, in modern America are much more refined and tight than the French revolution. Um, the police state apparatus is far more effective in modern day America than it ever was. Uh, in revolutionary France. Um, so a lot of these sort of like knock on causal effects that you, you look towards like how things kicked off in, uh, in revolutionary France was, isn't necessarily possible here. Um, sure. J Miles. Um, so, I mean, there's that to be considered. Um, so yeah. Um, but with that said, um, I have been on the record for a bunch of months now. Um, <laughs> oh shit, J Miles. Why are none of these popping? Um, it just, we, they were popping a minute ago. Uh, fucking J Miles. Thank you for the biddies. Is that, am I correct? Is that 20 bucks you just spent J Miles? Um, uh, you know what? I will give you, you know what, J Miles here. I will give you the new overlay just for shits and giggles. Thank you for the fucking biddies, J Miles. Um, fucking. It's, it's, it's little manlet has. Um. <laughs> um. That's that's has defending Stalin. Look at him go! Look at him go! Look at him go! Um. <laughs> Just for you, J Miles. Thank you for the biddies, J Miles. Fuck yeah. I'm um, sorry it didn't pop. Fucking a. Um. So. You relate the French Revolution to the current GOP MAGA movement? <sighs> they don't have what it takes. They don't know, they don't know what revolution is. You know what? Fucking honey vinegar. You seem 
mildly sane. Oh, well, Ada, it is actually his voice. It is actually has his voice. I pitched it up and sped it up, but it is. Um, Honey Vinegar, you seem relatively sane. Um, I don't think I'm going to get gamer words out of you. Do you want to come on the air and have this discussion? Because it seems like you've got, like, complex thoughts and varieties, uh, various avenues that you're going down, and that I, I, it's probably going to be difficult to get across in text, I would imagine. It's up to you. The offer stands. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't, I struggle to see, I struggle to see a variety of those parallels, um, but we can get you on the air if you want. Um, little man it has. Oh, he's adorable, isn't he? Let's see if I got any, uh, how is Beast not fucking, all right, Beast is here. Hang on, I'm gonna do a little fucking community work here um where's my community page there we go I've got tons of vip badges all right there's that one he's here all the time cricks um how the fuck does all right. Well, make sure that there. Um, oh, yeah. All right. Just handing out some VIP badges. <laughs> How the fuck doesn't Marcus have one? After all the work Marcus did on the legal section on the info store. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll be back in chat in a second. Sorry. Just doing a thing. I got distracted. What are you going to do? Bunch of you are going to have some VIP badges, though. A four foot six inch king. Um, fucking. But they did deal with it. They did touch it by by kicking it. They did touch it. They knew what the de facto, uh, uh, what that de facto ruling would do. That's 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 like a, a lack of uh, fucking. Uh, sorry. Uh, understanding of like the, the SCOTUS processes, like by kicking that back to uh, by the circuit courts and their decision, they created a de facto ruling on that one. I really don't think I, I don't think they need to touch it. I, I, th I think their willingness to kick it out, uh, to, a willingness to kick it back shows what their decision uh, process, uh, decision making process on that was. Um, they want it to be a de facto state ruling. Um, I, I really do. Um, as for the general consensus on Roe v. Wade, um, fucking current thoughts on the current debate of Roe v. Wade, it's a, a fucking personal property issue. Either you 
um, you either own your body or you don't. Do you do you own your body? If so, well then, abortion is a right. If you don't, well then, I guess you believe in some authoritarian construct in which the state has the right to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body. And in this case, it would be in order to be a brood mare for the state. I personally, um, even though, like, again, you know, I'm, I'm rocking the, the tackle down below. Like, it's not really my issue, and I'm a gay man. Um, it's not really my issue. Um, but I, I come down on the side of, like, you know, if a genital wart's going to irritate you for life, burn it the fuck off. It's a cluster of cells. Who gives a shit? A victim. <laughs> like, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not anything. It's, 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 it's a non-issue. Um, life isn't an individual entity. It's a process that started billions of years ago, potentially. And it, it, there's no single iteration of life. It's a, it's a, it's a network. It's a complex. Um, so, yeah. Like, if you want to have an abortion, have an abortion. Also, it's, it's a um, class issue. Like, fundamentally, abortion is a classist issue. Because if you think for a second that the well-to-do and the well-privileged uh, will not fly their pretty little thing across the globe if they need to to get their abortion so they don't screw up the rest of their life, then you haven't been paying attention to the history of this country. Because abortions have been always been on the table for the truly wealthy. Um, it's a social control mechanism. Yeah, I don't speak to them though, so I don't really care one way or the other. Um, I I don't I don't mind elevating the level of discourse to a le a point where others have to rise to meet it. I don't agree with the the fifty three percent of Americans that read at a fifth grade level or ben below. Um, I do not speak to the twenty five percent of Americans that are functionally illiterate. I write and speak at a level that requires some people to rise up. Some people can come down. There's postgraduates that would look at my essays, uh, essays and go, yeah, whatever. That's, that's fine. So I don't speak to them. It's not my issue. Hey, Amorous. Thank you for the resub. Fucking 13 months. Look at that, Amorous. Fucking. <laughs> um, yeah. Fucking I, <laughs> gatekeeper. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, I mean, look what a little fucking knowledge good does in this country. You get fucking idiots running around fucking doing anti-vax shit because they heard one doctor who is a widely discredited doctor say one time that maybe he had a study published that proved uh, autism, uh, uh, early life vaccination schedules led to autism. Next thing you know, you've got Jenny McCarthy running around and shit like that, right? Just a little, a little bit of knowledge in the wrong hands goes, <laughs> goes very, very wrong. Um, so, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that. Um, girl boss. Um, <laughs> Carpe. Hey, Carpe. Uh, this isn't the 101 class, let alone orientation. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind that. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, don't, I will. I will happily take that criticism. <laughs> uh, we, that's been the the, the discussion amongst um, Cat and myself, Catacilo, uh, um, since ages. Um, Cat teaches Cat teaches the like middle school, high school class when he speaks to people uh, about these topics, and I speak at a collegiate level. Like that's just the nature of our our rhetoric. That's the nature of our our propaganda of our praxis. Um, yeah, I don't mind that. Um, okay. Uh, how good's the grasp of liquid democracy? Okay. Um, a system in which an individual entrusts, uh, well, entrust, uh, it would, it would pluralize. Um, a uh, system in which an individual entrusts their, uh, their, <laughs> whether I'm going to criticize your, 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 uh, your, uh, your grammar here. 
Uh, entrust should be pluralized. That's the wrong form of there. I'm sorry whether you asked, so it's happening whether you want it or not. Um, a system in which an individual entrusts their vote to another person or takes it away, uh, or takes it away at any point. Um, I would rephrase this, but it that that's it. Understand you understand it. The process for retraction is decided beforehand as part of the process of building the system. I think that's an unnecessary sentence. Uh, imagine a room with <laughs> there's the fucking there's the net map. Uh, in, imagine a room with 55 people and five are given power by the 50 to operate a project. They are empowered to speak with the experts on behalf of their uh, their another the there 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 and there 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 and there with her. Uh, of their share of their their, their 50. A uh, delegate of 10 generally upsets upsets their trustees so the base meet to, uh, meets up through a formal process. Eight decide to take their vote it's there, there, and there and retain it to interest elsewhere. The original delegate now has three votes and one being their own. Uh, this process orders beyond 250 odd people because uh, Dunbar's number nice invocation uh the system is utilized along uh, alongside approval voting positions are well it could be a different voting processes um it doesn't necessarily have to be approval voting it could be even consensus uh, consensus decision making if you do it correctly um but i like the approval voting uh, the injection of approval voting you need to get fucking people thinking w about approval voting positions are at uh, rotational so no specific group becomes de facto political class and the resources and processes are distributed through the whole so there's no linchpin um I, yeah, I mean, it, it shows a it shows an understanding of it for sure. Um, may I ask about your about may I ask about religion? Yeah, we cover theology all the time on this channel. I'm an ordained minister. Um, because I'm scared of Christianity and terrified for the future of religion and how it'll affect my children's future. At this moment in my state, the religious are pushing God into public schools. I'm concerned as a secular father. Um, you have right to be. You, I'm not saying like, oh, you have right to be there because you're father. No, you have right to be concerned. Um, you, you have cause for concern. Um, may I ask which state? Because some of them are worse than others. Um, I, I know, like, atheists tend to be a little twitchy. Um, thank you, Wither. Can't, I, I'm my, I am my mother's son. Um, spelling and grammar were, were something that... Uh, Viva, actually, 31 other. Uh, 31 other. Uh, we're up to 32 ordained ministers in the community. Um... I am my mother's son. Grammar and spelling were drilled into me as important values very early on in life. So no getting that shit out of there. Um, Mister, if you want to go the easy, easy fucking route, Universal Life Church, just be sure to use your re a real legal name. It, it's a it's thing. Um, South Dakota? South Dakota, I think. Um, okay, so yeah, the Dakotas, I mean, the Dakotas are highly rural, which rurality in this country largely determines um, religiosity, uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, you, you've got an issue, for sure. Um, in God we trust in schools, eh, fucking mandated moment of prayer in public schools, failed, all right, so far, but in three years, okay. Um, so... Yes, uh, uh, fucking Carpe is correct, um, as with, you know, tends to be, um, um, you can, you have the option to take homeschooling. I don't think I, the issue with homeschooling Carpe and fucking, uh, honey vinegar is that it's sort of a, like a, a classist thing, right? Like you have to have the time, the energy, the, the, the information, the, the, the knowledge, the willpower, um, the capacity, right? You have to have the capacity to homeschool your children, right? And under a capitalist modality of operation, that could be highly restrictive, especially given the fact that most of the 
estimated one to two million um, religious based homeschooling uh, uh, kids in this country are based off of like some tradcom family shit where they have like a distributed income across multiple family members because they highly clustered um, uh, sort of uh, sort of a familial structure. Um, so it, it does become a, a classist talking point, a classist issue that whether you can reclaim homeschooling for yourself, but it is an option. Outside of that, um, it is um, unfortunate um, and difficult to do, but you may need to consider moving. Um, I know that it isn't easy to move. And again, that becomes a classist issue because moving in this country is, you know, again, capitalist modality. It costs money. It takes time. And plus you uprooting your family. Maybe you're moving away from people that, you know, a support network, that sort of thing becomes a whole issue. But if it becomes really a big issue, you may have to cross that bridge when you get to it sort of scenario. Outside of that, there really isn't much you can do if you are living in um, the sort of... Uh, I, I carpe. I've I've been seeing it more and more, and I, I look forward to it. Um, I I you may be fucked. You may be fucked. Um, you may be fucked. I mean, short term, long term. Like this is the carpe. Like yeah, carpe. Like growing pains. But I mean, those growing pains may take like what, 20, 40 years, like it's measured in decades, right? Carpe, it, like even on the inside, 10 years, right? So like, but that's for a kid in the education of a kid that's over in a blink of an eye. So the concerns that like honey vinegar is having for, you know, to be this, his own child, right? Like we can't really speak to it that way. Um, so can't the satanic temple approach help? Not really. Not in South Dakota. I mean, you know, yeah, it's not. No, not really. Um, there's also the, the sort of, there's a subversive methodology. Teach your kid. Teach your kid. Teach your fucking kid the basics. Teach your kid the basics. Teach, teach your kid the basics and not, I'm not telling, I'm not telling, I'm not talking like math and science. I'm telling, teach your kid that these people are full of shit. Teach your kid this. There are plenty of adults that think they know things and they don't know anything and they want to hurt you. And these people are some of them. Poison the well, poison the well. Teach your kid like right out of the gate. These fuckers are full of shit. Poison the well. If if you have to subject your subject your your child to an experience involving these entities that you don't want your child experiencing, poison the well. Nice carpe. Yeah. Fucking just. And then like, send them in. Send them in. Yeah. Like Chase said, raise an anarchist. We're all anarchists here. Well, I mean. Most of us, we're, we're fucking anarchists. Hi, my name's Kai. I'm an anarchist, right? Like, raise an anarchist. Teach him to question authority. Teach him to fucking, like, teach him to question hierarchical power structures. Teach him that, like, uh, adults are full of shit, right? Like, use an example. You remember when Billy was telling you that he was, like, he it, it, some stupid kid lie? Remember when Billy was saying that his dad was a superhero or some shit like that, right? Like, you remember how he lied? Yeah, adults lie like that all the time. Really? Yeah. Right? Like, that's poison the well. If, if you can't remove the child from the situation, give the child the necessary information. Sans actually, like, full-on homeschooling the kid. Teach him what the, the necessities. And make sure that they know that adults will sound like they're convincing, they sound like they're sure, but they don't know shit. And even if this means that you have to bite a couple of bullets as a parent that are uncomfortable, because the lessons that you're going to have to teach your kid to undermine all of that bullshit, right, may undermine some of your bullshit, which means you're going to have to be a more honest and upright parent with your kid, right? The reason that you're going to have to explain stuff 
rather than just give orders if you aren't already, right? You're going to have to justify your authority. You're going to have to explain to your kid why you say stuff. Because I have your best interest in mind. Because if you do this, 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 and this can happen. And I don't want that to happen because you would suffer because of whatever, right? Like, if you have to undermine authority as a concept, you're going to undermine some of your own authority. But do it in a do it in the correct way. Give the kid the tools they need. It's about your only option, right? You got fucking move the fuck out of the state, which you're already looking into. Fucking poison the well and fucking raise the kid right. Ah. Uh, yeah. Honey Venner, who gives a shit? Yeah, this is just called communal living. You can, Salvador, you can remove the fucking religiosity from that and just call it communal living. So that's all kibbutz is. It's just Jewish communal living. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's doable. I, I, you know, I mean, also don't have kids. <laughs> Don't have kids. Um, that's, you know, I know you already have one and you can't really roll that one back. So, no, you know. Uh, Carpe, I, I talked about that the other night, how she got so much shit for that, but she was right, right? And it's not her idea, but she got so much shit for that. It's like, you know, she's right. Dude, it, evolutionarily speaking, for the majority of human history, um... The children, the human species didn't know that that woman plus that man equaled that kid. There were like tribalistic, orgiastic, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, solstice events and lunar events. And there was, you know, we didn't necessarily know for the most, for most of our evolutionary history that whose kid was whose. They were the tribe's kid. We are, we're designed to be raised in a communal environment. That's, that's our evolutionary, evolutionary history. Yeah, that's, that's, so like gun for that one. Um, post birth abortion. Yeah. Individuals must, okay, one, fucking, you're already fucking, individuals must live according to the law, pay taxes, respect others' rights. Oh, homie, I, I got bad news for you on that front then. So what are you proposing children to learn? Oh, I don't know. Logic, math, grammar, rhetoric, trivium, if you're familiar with trivium, commonalities of everyday life, socialization, you know. Some of this stuff. <laughs> Was it Bullworth who said we should all keep fucking to the same color? It'd solve a couple of problems, wouldn't it, Carpe? <laughs> fucking just keep going at it. <laughs> oh, Amorous. I really wish some of you wouldn't meme that shit. I really wish some of you wouldn't meme that shit. Because these idiots fucking pick it up and just run with it. They don't know any different. They don't know any better. I'm not... Oh, fuck it. Am I going to go full boomer on this? I'm going to go full boomer on this. I don't like meme culture. I think meme culture is an extension of postmodernism. And I think po uh, the irony-soaked postmodernist uh, movement is responsible for the downfall of much of the uh, common discourse of today. Or uh, the downfall of what used to be common discourse into the s reductionist discourse of today. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's... Yeah, public. Yeah, yeah, Carpe, for sure. Um, beast, nah. Something, something, America. Butchered Fahrenheit. <laughs> something, something, America. Um, 
I mean, not regularly. I do post them. Um, cause some of them are funny, but I would be reticent to use them in the, in the, uh, in the course of, uh, rhetoric or a dialectical exercise for sure. Caboose. I, I wouldn't be like in the middle of a fucking like conversation with somebody. I wouldn't be like, Oh wait, let's use a meme for this. I'd be like, you know, no, let's use a source text for this. It wouldn't be my go-to. Because there's no nuance with memes. And that's... Uh, yeah. Hmm. <sighs> GL, then just study up on individualists. Study up on um, Sterner and individualists, and find your way to that. You're, you're, there's there's a camp of anarchists for you already, Jill. You you don't have to be a mutualist or a communalist. You you can be an individualist or an egoist. There's there's already a school there for you. Study the individualists. Start there. You don't have to go full full Sterner. Study the individualists. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Wither. <laughs> Fucking, all right, Wither. Uh, hold on, let me toggle over to moderation. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, That's hilarious that they came back. Oops. Um, okay, wither, done. Ban removed. Um, yep. <laughs> we had uh, we had a kid in here who was 17, turning 18, like within a month or something like that. And we're like, dude, you got to go, though. You got to go. We're an 18 only, 18 and over community only. Um, and so we fucking banned him. But we told him, like, send send somebody a message when you turn 18. Um, yep, out of youth jail. He's turned 18, so we pulled the ban on him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Great work credits, too. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Uh, yeah. Uh, techno utopian socialist, but I have no issue with anarchism itself. Yeah, GL, I mean, GL, if you haven't studied the, the individualist, you might find something useful there. I'd, I'd say go for it. Like, definitely, like, study the individualist, man. Um, but, oh, what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? All right. I already said it was, it was going to be a short, a shorter stream tonight because I didn't want to go into their fucking wee hours in the late AMs and shit like that. Uh, Yeah, now he's in my group where we're scientifically youth. Yeah, you're all fucking twelve. If you're if you're under the age of like twenty five, you're twelve to me. Because that's the fucking channel policy. The actual age of consent should be age twenty five. Anything else than that is arbitrary, and you're just fucking making yourself comfortable with uh, like hebephilia and pedophilia and shit like that, right? It's just pick a fucking real number. Um. Pick a number like informed by scientific inquiry, which is 25. Frontal lobe development um, tends to uh, tends to see around 25 to 28, but 25 is the generally recognized number, and the frontal lobe is responsible for the executive function, planning, that sort of thing. Um, and therefore, any consent-based uh, topic should be based uh, should most assuredly be informed by science. Anybody who argues for anything less than 25 is making an arbitrary decision. 
I am today's Will Alexander. I got the biddies on this account. I used to smoke iron scraps and titanium splinters out of a rusty pipe. These are the medical grade metals. My lungs look like it's right out of the Mark 9 movies. I stopped all of that and now I'm doing better. Glad to be in the stream, brother. God bless. Dude, Daniel Woolman, aka Will Alexander. Always love what you do. Always love what you do. Thanks for the biddies, my man, as always, and love to see you. Hope you're doing well, Will Alexander. Um yeah, I'm old. Wait, I shouldn't be excited that I'm closer to death than Marcus. <laughs> Realizing I'm an adult by Kai's standard old. Yep, Che. Uh, do anarchists approve of social security, vehicle driver regulations, public health standards on a basic level? At what point is one an anarchist? At what point is one an anarchist? When one adopts a philosophical lens of analysis that is akin or aligned to an anarchist uh, standards of uh, philosophical or ideological standards. It's that simple. Heterarchical, uh, heterarchical organizational modalities of operation, horizontal rather than hierarchical, which is vertically integrated. And understanding the philosophical or meta-ethical challenges to claims of authority and why we advocate for the dismantling or replacement of the systems thereof. This is how one becomes an anarchist. Um, understanding these topics, not just by yelling about state bad, not by uh, fucking throwing a brick through a window. One becomes an anarchist by actually comprehending and integrating these concepts into your lens of analysis. So utilizing that lens of analysis, let's look at your questions. Do anarchists approve of social security, driver, vehicle driver regulations, and public health standards on a basic level? Okay, so let's start breaking those down. Social security. Social Security is a statist program, but it is fundamentally UBI. UBI can be utilized in a, a Gorsian methodology. Frank Gors was a French socialist that advocated for the uh, manipulation of a statist system utilizing uh, 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 Social Security and uh, uh, various uh, uh, state infrastructure to provide for the people to create the distance from the capitalist uh, architecture to otherwise uh, set up a dual power structure that then one could use that breathing room to distance one from oneself from the state. So do anarchists believe in social security? Some will come down on the side of any participation in state which is a matter for, uh, there's an absolute matter of no. You would see someone like Emma Goldman would come down on that side. Um, she would absolutely state that um, any interaction, see vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the state infrastructure, even down to voting, would be a furthering uh, of the uh, reputation or an acceptance or an accreditation of the status infrastructure, and she would argue against it. Then you would have uh, uh, people such as myself, and even up to and including like some contemporaries like Jason McQuinn, that would uh, absolutely argue that you could create dual power structures using uh, using that architecture. See, here's the the trick. Um, who has this? Uh, Omnibill. Here's the trick, Omnibill. Anarchism isn't a monolithic entity. It isn't a monolithic philosophy or ideology. It's actually a network of ideas. And in the words of Emma Goldman, we much prefer it that way. There's individualists, there's mutualists, there's communalists. There's some that believe civilization is bad. There's some that believe that uh, you could use technology to bring about a better civilization. So it depends on the anarchist that you're speaking to. My uh, mm, music just fucking paused. Uh, me personally, I think that Social Security is a flawed program. I think dri vehicle driver regulation is fucking half-assed at best. Um, and I think public health standards at a basic level should be handled completely differently than they are now. Uh, techno prim for the win. Uh, dude, carpe, carpe, anprim.org. Enjoy. Carpe. Do it, look it up sometime. Anprim.org. You're going to love it. Check their media section. Just read some of the articles. You're going to love it. Fuck the fuck the farmers one is brilliant. You're, you're <laughs> dude, I'm telling you. It's great. Apparently it's like four or five Dutch people, like some Dutch youths that set the site up. It's fucking, it's genius. Um, shout out to Emma Goldman. If I can't dance, I don't want to be a part of your revolution. Yeah, dude, I love Emma. Emma's fucking, Emma's baller. Emma and I would argue like cats and dogs. 100%. I know that. Emma and I uh, have fundamental differences in how we engage in our anarchism and how we view um, anarchist theory. But I love and respect the woman, and I wouldn't ever trade her for anything. Um, she was a baller bitch, um, and I, I adore the woman. 
Wish us happy Indigenous Genocide Day here in Australia. Is it fucking, was it Australia Day or some shit down there? Down under? Um, <laughs> Goldman Kropotkin. Why won't you consider that people fuck? Uh... <laughs> well, Alexander, I love seeing you actually in chat. I love seeing you actually in chat. Uh, fucking. Yeah, Carpe. Dude, it's fucking. Dude, amprim.org is fucking. It's a fucking trip. Check the media section, my man. You'll know what I'm talking about. You don't need to bring it up in fucking chat. But check the fucking media section. You'll know what's up real quick. Scroll around. Look around. You'll notice a theme. <laughs> Uh, well, what do, what part don't you agree with, Caleb? Uh, uh, Caleb, so a broad brush. Maybe I can change your mind. What aspect of anarchism do you find points? Uh, what what points of contention do you have with anarchism? Um, invasion day. Yeah, dude, beast. Uh, dude, Anprim.org is a fucking trip. I found it a bunch of months ago, and I, I showed it on air. Thing is crazy as fuck. They are a wacky bunch. Anprim's, like, this is the thing. Like, I'd love to divorce uh, the anarchist milieu from Anprim's, but I can't because they are legitimately anarchists. They're just genocidal nutjobs, that's all. <laughs> Mister, just checked it out. Am I on a list now? Oh, for sure. For sure. The farmer's cabal has destroyed society. How is it good? What part of Lord Acton's rule does uh, hierarchical structures, uh, like what part of hierarchical structures is exempt from Lord Acton's rule? For those of you who don't know the historian, um, uh, Lord Acton, he is responsible for the quote that you probably have bastardized a few times in your life. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. What part of the hierarchical power structure and uh, uh, modality of operation is is, uh, is exempt from Lord Acton's rule, right? Like giving one authority over another human being is rife for corrupt uh, for corruption and coercion. It just is. Creating hierarchical stru power structures is leading into that problem. It, it just it's how it happens. Um, if you can design a better system, why not? Why not use a distributed topology rather than a centralized topology? Information technologists and cybernetic theorists uh, already know this, that the most resilient, uh, the most resilient network uh, topology is not that of centralized or even decentralized, it's distributed, which is what a hierarchically organized system is. It's a distributed topology. So... I, I find exemption with that that you you that you qualified as a good system. <clears throat> Fast acting, Lord acting. <laughs> well, Alexander. Oh, well, Alexander. No oh, fuck it. Just weather. Yeah, they're not ready for the anti spook conversation. That's that dude, that's that's some I'm so proud of you, Wither. Know that Wither. Super proud of you. <laughs> what is a spook? Oh god. We're supposed to we're supposed to say Spectre these days. Uh, with the British spelling R E. S P E C T R E. So what we're supposed to be using. Um, oh, that's great. Um, during the Spanish Civil War, during the middle of a uh, literal shutdown of their country uh, during the uh, revolution, uh, anarchist communes uh, result, uh, were responsible for 50% of the entirety of the nation's production, both uh, agricultural and industrial. The anarchist Republic of Caspia, while a small example, lasted for 375 years and outproduced the surrounding papal states to the point of uh, uh, 
Uh, let's see. Hang on. Fucking somebody just got fucking tagged hard. Uh, outproduced the surrounding papal states to the point of. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna deny that. Uh, out to uh, outproduced them to the point of uh, um, threat to the entirety of the papal states. So they surrounded them, it, they encircled them, attempted to starve them out, and then forced them to surrender their uh, sovereignty because they didn't have the numbers that, say, somebody like Nestor Makhno had to leverage the Ukrainian, or uh, create and then leverage the Ukrainian Black Army, which he could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the papal states. So, again, I've seen entire nation states uh, propped up in the middle of crises that would otherwise have uh, caused famine by anarchistically organized communes. So again, I see your farming example and I raise it Spain during their civil war. Or I could raise it the Zapatistas. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Anarchistic method of, uh, of methods of organizing uh, production are more resilient and they're more productive. You can see work, heterarchically organized worker cooperative studies for this. Um, heterarchically organized worker co uh, cooperatives are more resilient on a business-based strategy. Um, they're more, uh, they produce a higher rate of happiness. They produce a higher output. You can see the British Architectural Association study on heterarchically organized, um, or, uh, heter heterarchically organized uh, architects, business, uh, business consultants on this. Um, in which the uh, consortiums of architects generally output better for the end consumer as well as increased rates of happiness. They have a survival rate that is averaged on five years rather than three years based, uh, compared to the uh, their hierarchically organized competitors. You could look to special ops teams in the Department of Defense and the United States military for when uh, critical infrastructure and decision-making processes are necessary for field operations. They use hierarchically organized structures rather than hierarchically organized structures because they're more resilient in the field and they're more uh, productive as far as quick decision making goes. Omnibill, if they're organizing, how is that anarchy? Anarchos, from the Greek, and without Arcos, rulers. Anarchy is actually highly organized, it isn't chaos. That was a propaganda technique that was taught to you by the Wilson administration from around 19, uh, 1914. Uh, a series of pamphlets that were anti-anarchist, anti-socialist, and anti-communist pamphlets that were spread around that has been a mainstay of uh, Western uh, propaganda, governmental propaganda, ever since. Your misunderstanding of the concept of anarchism is fundamentally a misunderstanding. Uh, anarchism is highly organized. Zapatista coffee available to all near all Western nations. Zapatista coffee can actually be purchased from Alex Jones. Alex Jones's own Infowars coffee coffee is produced by a bunch of anarchistically organized communists. Yep, at GL. Yep, Zapatista coffee is easy to get from Alex Jones. Anarchists are highly productive individuals and groups. Right now, Food Not Bombs is feeding people in, what, 100 in some countries? 134, something like that. Uh, right now, anarchists are feeding people all across the globe, whereas the capitalists are actively starving them.
<clears throat> Here's all the places where anarchists are feeding people. This is one organization, all hierarchically organized. There's no one at the top of this organization. No one answers to anybody. This is not a hierarchy. This is a hierarchically organized uh, group of individuals spread across the globe, feeding people, doing it well, doing it effectively, doing it regularly with predictability. This is the power of anarchism. Uh, honey vinegar, it happens. Sorry to hear it, but it happens. Caleb, I hope you do. And if you have questions, return. I'm happy to give you reading. There's uh, there is a reading list on my website. Uh, <laughs> This is a great fucking descriptor, Honey Vinegar. I was like Meryl Streep in Montana on a Friday afternoon. Um, Caleb's, I'm, I'm happy to give you... There's a reading list on my website uh, for starting places for uh, various uh, anarchist uh, thoughts. Um, so, uh, someone want to give him the reading list? Um, fucking... I think it's just reading. Yeah, it's re just reading. Yeah. So there you go. Um, pull that up, Caleb. Um, I would recommend you start with um, uh, The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna, K-I-N-N-A. Um, easily obtainable. Every uh, There's links on my website. No, they don't go to fucking affiliates. I'm not making any money off of when you click that fucking link. Um, it'll take you to Firestorm, I think, is the, the, um, so if you're in North America, um, I think the Ruth Kinna book is coming from Firestorm. Um, but I would recommend Start with the Government of No One by Ruth Kinna. It'll probably be the top link on the list, um, for the beginner section. Um, start there. And if you have any questions, come on back. I'm on most days of the week. Uh, tonight's the night show. Tuesday, Thursdays are 11.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday are, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, U.S. time, of course. Um, fair enough, Caleb. Then uh, just get the titles. Get the titles. Um, yeah, start with The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna. It's a good, it's a good beginner's uh, starting position if you're, you're legitimately curious and you want to, you want to start exploring. <clears throat> and if you, if you're a reader, I, there's plenty of books on that list. Um, but yeah, start there. Um, yes, it's a vastly misunderstood ideology, mainly because of government propaganda, because we are dangerous, um, not because we will destroy shit or hurt people. Um, though there is that in the history, but that's the neo-libs have killed plenty of people. Fuck it. <laughs> name, name, name a group that hasn't, right? But we have ne not nearly the body count that any of the other ideologies have, frankly. Um... We're dangerous to power structures. We teach people how to analyze and dissect and replace power structures. And when you're in the business of controlling people, be it through religion or government, and let's face it, religion was the original government, wasn't it? Um, when you're in the business of controlling people, mind, body, and soul, right? Um, people who are walking around with the panacea to that are seen as enemies of the state. So we're generally considered persona non grata in a lot of circles. Um, <laughs> go figure. Rulers don't like people telling them you don't really need them. <laughs> oh, yeah, Salvador. Yeah, it happens. That happens. Um, luckily, I, I, yeah, I came about it. Um, no. 
No, I haven't, Commodity. I haven't. Sorry. Have you guys heard of a guy named Michael Schellenberger? Saw him on a show earlier and hearing what he had to say made me want to pull my hair out. Nah, I've never heard of him. Um, yeah. Let me look him up. Oh, Michael Schellenberger. What do we got? Oh, he's a PR professional. Lovely. Uh, focus on the intersection of climate change, nuclear energy, and politics. Self-described eco-modernist. He argues for an embrace of modernization and technological development using through a combination of nuclear power and urbanization. I, I'm not a, opposed to that. Controversial and polarizing figures. I mean, the urbanization. I'm fucking... Hmm. I'm a country boy at heart. Schellenberger sharply disagrees with other environmentalists over the impacts of environmental threats and policies for addressing them. Uh, positions have been called bad science and inaccurate. What's his, what's his takes? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the controversy section? I don't think it would follow. Uh, all right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I mean, all I'm seeing is that he's pro-nuclear so far. That's like the biggest fucking shit about him. Um, what was he saying? Uh, who fucking tagged me with this? Commodity. Uh, what was he saying that um, was freaking you out? Jesus. Okay, I'm starting to see some of it. <laughs> Never mind. Hang on. I'm starting to see it. Yeah, especially when he enters his fucking why progressives ruin cities phase. Holy shit. Commodity. Just as commodity says, it's about the solution to ending homelessness. Yeah, when I was reading the, the why progressives ruin cities shit, fucking definitely. I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> like, never mind. Right? At the very beginning, I'm like, eh, you know, it doesn't seem too bad. Fucking, oh, never mind. Okay, got it. Uh. Yeah, GL, that was basically me reading through, like, the descriptions of him really quickly. It was like, you know, oh, nuclear fucking urbanization. Man, like, okay, this doesn't seem too bad. Oh, God. All right. Yeah, this is not great. This is not great. All right. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um... Somebody asked a question earlier. I saw it go by, but I didn't fucking take heed. Um, are these anarchist farmers working locally only if they're within countries of trade, international and government regulations are encountered? Uh, the Zapatistas trade their uh, the anarchistically grown coffee globally. Uh, like I said before, um, the Zapatistas, you can buy their coffee from Alex Jones. Not kidding. You can buy it in coffee shops in America. You can buy it from fucking Alex Jones. It's fucking blah, blah, blah. No, um, yeah, fucking we deal, we interface with capitalists all the time. There is there is no uh, ethical consumption under capitalism and anarchists in, uh, interface uh, successfully because we're capable of interfacing successfully. Um, the uh, Trumbull plaques outside of Detroit, Michigan, uh, which by the way, weather the Detroit collapse just fine. Um, Trumbull Plex, which is an anarchistic commune outside Detroit, Michigan. I think they're going on like year 27, 28, something like that. Um, I forget what they're up to now. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, maybe more than that. Either way, I forget what anniversary date they're up to. They have residences on site. They've got artist spaces. They've got like their own internet connection. They've got, um, fucking like a theater. They've got a library. Um, they weathered the Detroit collapse just fine. Um, 
and they interface successfully like on the inside of the the, the complex of Trumbleplex, um they um they are like they non-currency communally based communitarian uh economic uh system inter uh, I- interacted um but they successfully interface with a neoliberal capitalist modality outside their walls um yeah it's it's anarchists interact with government regulations if we have to because we fucking most of us are pragmatists at heart um but the internals of our system are far more fluid far more effective far more resilient than any of those hierarchical modalities that we operate with uh uh, that we interact with um i mean being called a commune or a co-op doesn't prevent you from clearing customs or anything um fucking yeah right um so yeah yeah in the in the words of zoomers yeah um coming soon coming soon we live in a society filled with memes all right anyway yeah um don't want to tell you shit works uh, who posted this? Oh, it was Crimson. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Crimson. I just saw shared content, Crimson. Uh, just saw shared content. <laughs> uh, is there any headlines that I want to talk about beyond what I talked about? Uh... Let's see. Don't care, don't care. Oh, Jesus Christ, where now? Oh, it's BC. BC. We got a new find. Fucking 93 more unmarked graves found at a residential school uh, in uh, in BC, Colum- uh, in BC Col- uh, sorry, British Columbia, Canada. L. L. Thank you for the resub, L. Fucking prime sub. Daddy Bezos bucks, too. L. F- uh, fuck. Fucking 11 months. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, non-binary. I saw that. The, but, well, he's fucking... He's saying that, like, he may sanction him personally if blah, 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 blah. Fucking. Um, yeah, 93 more grave sites. Fucking just keep fucking add it to the board. Fucking add it to the tally. Um... I hate to be cavalier and callous about it, but I mean, let's face it. You know, there's like shit tons of graves up there that we'll never find. So, and down here and all around fucking, let's just fucking China, the, the, the ethno-nationalist Han Chinese wiped out indigenous societies. The fucking Russians did it. The fucking Soviets, the Soviets did it. The fucking British in the form of America and the Aussies and blah, 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 blah. We all know the story. Like, I don't, I don't mean to be, like, reductionist about it, but let's just say a whole lot of people killed out, a, killed a whole lot of people. We all know it happened. We're just coming to terms with it. Um, and Canada's just finding a whole bunch of them, right? Like, that's, Canada's like, oh, shit, we found some more. Yeah. What'd you expect? You genocided a people. That's kind of, you know, what happens. Uh, oh, I know that color palette. No, I don't want to watch that. Oh, wait, wait. Is it somebody else? Hold on. I may actually. Hmm. I'm going to hang on to this weather. <laughs> Go figure. When you genocide, you get left with bodies. Not if you do it right. <laughs> Short-sighted. If you if you throw them in a grave, <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh... <laughs> oh, thank you, Caleb. <laughs> I'm gonna hang on to this weather. I'm gonna watch this later, not on stream. I'm just gonna watch it weather. I think I'll find that interesting. Um, oh man, 
Oh, Caleb, just fucking hang out then. Dude, my, my sense of humor is dark as fuck. I'm, I'm long past that. Like, that's not even... I, dude, your, your choice is, your, your choice is laugh or cry. Life is a difficult travail. It is a road filled with suffering. Your choice is laugh or cry. I was raised by a nurse who ran opera, uh, who ran emergency rooms, recovery rooms, and operating rooms. Um, she didn't shield me from the reality of the human condition. Let's just put it that way. And I inherited a, an emergency room nurse's sense of humor real quick. Um, shit is fucked out there. Your only choice is laugh or cry. That or become completely numb. And if you could become completely numb, you're fucked. You're fucked. Know that, people, by the way. Know that. If, if, if the stimulus fails to make you laugh or cry and you're just numb... It's a very, very bad sign. It's a very bad sign. Um, get some cop news going. Oh, you want to see some shit? I think it's, I think it's, um, I think I can show it on stream. Um, you want to see how much uh, police value the lives of the suspects they're chasing? Here, I'll get, I'll get you a fucking, I'll get you. I think this is stream safe. Um, <laughs> so, this is so fucked. He survives. We didn't just watch somebody die. <laughs> he turned into him. You noticed that, right? He turned into him. Fucking yeah. Uh, it was. It was. The video was entitled "A Human Pit Maneuver." <laughs> uh, she is awesome, Salvador. She is awesome. Uh. So there's 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 some there's some uh, fucking <laughs> Amber. So that cop was convicted of attempted murder, right? Um, that cop w uh, didn't even get a, uh, uh, a citation on his record. It was deemed an accident. Yeah, they, they tried to say the guy was injured in a motorcycle accident. Did he look hurt running across the road just then? Yeah. Yeah, it was deemed an accident uh, on the part of the officer. He lost traction on the grass. Yeah, that was that was that was the summation of that uh, that investigation into it. Um, uh, is this this is us, right? This is us. They're still fucking doing it. Oh, I love this one. Okay, for those of you who don't know that are new on the channel, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, if you don't, if I'm not going to go into the whole fucking rigmarole, but what you have to know is Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Las Vegas operates on an entirely different wavelength than the rest of the world. All right? The police are still defending this. This is great. They're fucking, they, they, they are insisting that they correctly in uh they correctly uh, uh, arrested this individual this is this is amazing i love this story all right so the one on the right white dude right here who's like 50 plus is the individual with the warrant the individual on the left the 20 something young black man is the individual they arrested but wait there's more Henderson, Nevada, which is one of the sub the primary suburb of Las Vegas, Nevada. Henderson arrested Shane. Okay, they had him for three days. They then transferred him to Clark County Corrections, which is Metro, and then they had him for like five days or some shit like that. Both Henderson and Las Vegas. Two separate jails, two separate police departments had to do social security number and ID checks and knew the whole way through. All right. And they still today maintain they correctly arrested him. 
One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is doing its own thing. maintaining they were it was a good arrest oh god <laughs> the cops aren't racist why do leftists keep calling the cops racist i i you know there you go you want some fucking you want to get your cop ire up there you go get your cop ire up with that one and clearly they have the same chin yes yes clearly i mean Oh, keep in mind, uh, California had the dude. The the guy they were actually looking for, California had him. He was already in the in the system. He was already arrested. California had him. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you guys were fine. Public. You guys put him in the system. You guys logged the data. You guys are good. Fucking had Nevada checked, had Las Vegas checked, had Henderson checked, they would have found that fucking California had him. But they didn't because they had a young black man and they were busy fucking with him instead. Oh, uh, <laughs> this place operates on an entirely different way. Like, checking is a lot of work. You're right, public. Checking is a lot of work. It's like three keystrokes. I mean, that's that dude. He could have, dude. That cop, that that booking officer, could have gotten like a repetitive stress injury moving the mouse around. That's that's injured in the line of duty. Fucking thin blue line, my man. Blue lives matter. Uh, super serial, super serial, dude. I fucking lost my shit. I came on stream uh, last week. Um, we just got footage. Like I still have the footage. It's a Buddhist. Um, SWAT rated the wrong with Breonna Taylor, Las Vegas, P Las Vegas SWAT Breonna Taylor to dude. They, they fucking raided the wrong house looking for a fuck looking for some dude on a warrant and they bust this door down and this dude lay it sleeping on the couch by the door fucking grabs his gun and pops off like three, four rounds like at the officers and they just fucking AR-15 unload in him and he just like fucking you can see the gun just going back like <laughs> they claim he fired 18 rounds at them, which would have been a mag change, by the way. They claim he fired 18 rounds at him and it was a justified shooting. Yeah. Fucking, um, then, then the footage got, got released and everybody's like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. The, the video is fucking rough. Video's rough. No. Yeah. Public. No, he did not live. They fucking shot that motherfucker to death. Um, no, 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 public. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, like, they Breonna Taylor to dude. Yeah. Wrong house entirely. Yeah. Um, yeah, wrong house entirely. They fucking, sw like, yeah, no, wor no worries, public. Um, fucking, yeah, so Vegas SWAT Breonna Taylor to dude. They kicked in the wrong door to the wrong house and fucking just lit this dude up who grabbed a gun because his house was being fucking invaded by dudes dressed in black armed with rifles. Um, I could have sworn we had the Second Amendment, right? Fucking, he thought he was being home invaded and shit, so he grabbed his, he grabbed his piece and threw a couple of rounds at him. And then the cops fucking played, you know, oh, the officer who was hit has a long road to recovery ahead of him. Good. I hope he shits in a bag for the rest of his life, piece of shit. Oh, yeah, public. Uh, the NRA is definitely speaking up on the, what? Oh, hang on. I've just got, I've got word in the, the individual they killed was black. Um, so the NRA has left the building. Um...
at <laughs> Rumble. My family still blamed Brianna for that, and even after everything had already come out and claimed that her boyfriend was there, they fell on his gun illegally. But don't worry, they're not racist. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, it, it's fucking don't don't feel bad, Caleb, dude. Fucking NRA is racist as shit. Every time a black man gets shot using a gun legally in this country, the NRA just fucking poof, fucking just disappears into the ether. Meanwhile, some white motherfucker up in fucking Wyoming or some shit gets into a standoff with the fucking feds because and they're like, it's the right to own guns. Like, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Oh shit. Uh fucking if you really are Ukrainian, good luck. Uh fucking nothing but love, my man. Good luck with that shit. Um yeah, fuck Russia there <laughs> um, fuck russia um i good luck that's that's all i got for you keep your head down and fucking like keep it on a swivel and if you can't get the fuck out of there um yeah flando castile is a great example um yeah let's hope no reactors pop off fucking um what you got with her what you got Oh god, this is TMZ. Um Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're cleaning they're fucking they're roused in the homeless in Los Angeles fucking because the Super Bowl happens. Yeah. Olympics, Super Bowl, that sort of thing. They fucking start rousting all the homeless people and kicking them out. Standard policy. Oh, yeah, public. Fucking dummy leftists. Dude, I've had a bunch of fucking dummy leftists come through and I have to fucking school them. It's like, this isn't us. Like, this is just keep your fu I get it. Murica bad. Like, I get it. But, like, take your fucking Murica bad goggles off for a second. And start, like, actually doing some geopolitical analysis on this situation. Dude, Putin's driving this motherfucker. Right? Like, this ain't us. This is Putin. <laughs> This motherfucker's facing a collapsing demographic. He's facing a policy, uh, like a, a fucking a collapsing, uh, uh, like support. He's yeah, like it's dude, it's bad. Like I, I did a whole fucking segment on it a few days ago, and last week, Friday, I don't fucking remember. Yes, yes, I'm defending the U.S. I am a CIA operative confirmed. I'm also a secret fascist. I work for the CIA, the Illuminati, George Soros. Um, fucking, I'm the CEO of Antifa. That one was given, I'm the CEO of Antifa. That one was given to me by uh, Crooked Nose Media. So, you know, it's official. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, the DEA. Um, who else have I fucking worked for? Um, oh, oh, fucking, I'm, I'm also, like, uh, apparently a Nazi as well somehow. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Caleb. Yeah, nobody's thrown MI5 at me yet. That's, 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 a, that's one I haven't gotten yet. Uh, yes, yes, public. Many, many hats. Many hats, many hats. As, as you, you know, fucking, and some of those hats... Our cat ears. Um. Uh, we can shit on the UK for an LGBT thing. Uh, labor politicians slammed for trying to erase UK transphobia. Uh, fucking tried to play downplay UK transphobia at international resolution on anti-LGBT hate. Council of Europe has denounced the UK's virulent attacks against LGBT in a report that puts the nation in company with Russia. Hmm. Always good luck. Uh, I know, right, public? GL. GL. How do you know I'm not working domestically in the UK? Nani? <laughs> I know, right? Well, why else would Will Alexander give me the biddies? Right? Yeah. Um. 
Oh no, I've admitted plenty of times, Salvador. I'm, 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 I like I said, I'm, I'm CIA. I'm Illuminati. I'm fucking Freemason. I'm, I work for George Soros. I'm the head of CEO of Antifa. I'm fucking a secret fascist. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no worries. Um, oh god, are we doing the thing? Oh fuck them. Yeah. Oh, is Illuminati your re recruitment open again? I mean, I can't say openly public, but I mean, just check your window for the carrier bird. It's, you know. Um. Are we unironically doing the fucking cops have a dangerous job shit again? Yeah, we are. Omnibill. Yeah, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. Even with the deaths of those two officers, cops don't have a dangerous job. I've literally written the essay on this fucking shit. I've utilized the police officer's own, statistic, uh, own statistics, 0.0058% um, fatality rate amongst uh, police officers. They don't have a dangerous job. They don't even rank on the dangerous jobs list for America. They don't even rank. Um, it's, it's, not even, it's not even close to a dangerous job. Oh, yeah, public COVID's fucking taking them out like that. Fucking COVID is doing the work that the Black Panthers fucking couldn't do. <laughs> like, the OG Black Panthers. Um, fucking, they, they, not even close. Um... Uh, yeah, unholy. Yeah, generally referred to as loggers within the like Advisor Smith Insurance Policy Group. But yeah, Foresters. De yeah, they are by and far the number one. Like not even close. Cops. Cops can't even. Did you put a cop next to a fucking logger or a forester, and like you're you're literally dealing with two orders of magnitude? Uh, no, I'm using injuries as well. Uh, advisor uh, Advisor Smith uh, Insurance Analysis Group uh, puts out I injuries per hundred thousand uh, as well. I've literally written the, uh, written in it, uh, a, a published essay on this. You can't, dude, homie. We I can go through the fucking numbers, and I use the numbers provided by the National Law Enforcement Memorial uh, National Law Enforcement Mo uh, Officers Memorial Fund, which are the most generous and liberal approach to officer injuries and fatalities. I, I gave the benefit of the doubt to the cops and I used one of the leading insurance policy groups, uh, analysis groups, numbers for injuries and fatalities. Homie. Two orders of magnitude difference. Not even close. Not even close. You know, you know who has a more dangerous job? Injuries included. Injuries included. You know who has a more dangerous job? Pizza delivery drivers. Farmers. Woodworkers, septic tank servicers, rotary drill operators, dredgers, paving uh, paving operators, pilots, sailors, truck drivers, ranchers, rail track layers, rebar, rebar workers, riggers, f uh, farming first line supervisors. Quite literally, everybody has a more dangerous job than cops. Again homie you're not prepared to have this discussion with me i have the numbers at my disposal and i've written about them you're not you're going to get outclassed on this argument very quickly yes walking down the stairs is more dangerous than being a cop no it's yeah occupational safety uh, yeah, fucking everybody fucking has has more dangerous jobs than cops. It's not even close. They do not rank. So, again, whoa. And you want to know what the, um, this is a fun, just a fun aside. What my essay was titled, Police Officer Fatalities or... 
how to control a populace using lies and force. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> and let's just read the last two paragraphs of my essay, shall we? Because we don't need to break the numbers down. <clears throat> You'll notice right away that police officers don't make an appearance on the list as they're not in the most dangerous professions in America, though they'd have you believe otherwise. The truth of the matter is that police do not face much violence or danger in their job. It is through blatant lies such as this that they have invaded our local communities and terrorized our people with military-grade equipment that they gained access to via the 1033 federal program. And now we have poorly trained, link included, source included, poorly educated, source included, low IQ, source included, scared out of their mind, source, source included, terrorists, source included, roaming our streets with AR-15s, source included, MRAPs, source included, and head-to-toe black uniforms looking like any bad guy out of any Hollywood movie, source included. The rise of the warrior cop has occurred in direct response to this nonsensical horseshit they continually spew. In fact, it's getting safer to be a cop in America, as from 2008 to 2020, they had a decrease in fatalities and injuries across the board. Yet, they still advocate for greater armaments, immunities, and access to our everyday lives. So, why is this important? Because, if we're ever to fix anything in this country, some public protesting and resistance is going to be necessary. Ever notice who the first people to respond to even a perfectly peaceful protest are? Yep, the police. Source included. If the protest is in any way a threat to the status quo, read effective, they are going to kettle, source included, pepper spray, source included, beat, source included, shoot, source included, and even drop C4 Tovex TR2 bombs destroying in, uh, entire neighborhoods, source included, until the status quo is maintained. To, to improve anything truly in our society begins with radical police reform. Homie. Miss me with that fear-mongering, authoritarian, boot-licking, terrorist-loving bullshit. Pass. <laughs> oh! And the best part, cops aren't legally, regulatorily, or even job descriptionally required to protect or serve you in any way, shape, or form. In fact, in situations that are measured in seconds, police are often two digits worth of minutes away. The cops, their job from a Supreme Court decision are functionally to respond and document. That is the standard to which we hold cops in our nation. They are not there to protect you. They are not there to help you. They are not there to save you. In fact, if you get stabbed, they won't help you at all. They are there to respond and document. That is their only allegiance to you. Beyond that, they are a revenue stream for the state and they are the foot soldiers of the elites to maintain the status quo of society. That is their function. If you believe anything other than that, I'm sorry, but you have been propagandized. Any analysis of the history of policing in America and metropolitan policing especially will prove otherwise. And if you're wondering why I can speak on this, one, I come from one of these families. My stepfather is a judge. I've got police officers in my family. I've got FBI agents in my family. I've got all of this sort of exposure. I've taught firearms training. Um, my family has run firearms training facilities. I've had 
military grade next to soldiers training in firearms. I have done these. I have seen them. I have taught these classes. They are horrible with their firearms. Beyond that, I have studied and written about the origins of and problems with modern policing in America. I have told this story to many, uh, multiple times on this channel. I have elucidated this essay to the members of this community. I have told where policing comes from, metropolitan policing. It was born in Britain. It was born in London. The Metropolitan Police Force of London under Sir Robert Peel, the Peel Acts, was the birthplace of metropolitan policing as we've come to know it. The unified structure, the twofold structure of policing in North America from the big stick that suppressed labor movements in the North that was funded by the oligarchs to the slave patrols in the South that served as an ad hoc terrorist organization to keep the chattel slaves in place came, to, uh, came together and combined in no ref reformed or unbroken method to create the modern policing of today. You can draw an unbroken line, an uncut thread from that big stick in slave patrol to the police of today. And I have done it. I've written about it. I've spoken about it. You cannot speak on this topic with any more level of expertise than I could. Trust me. You're out of your depth when talking about the police to me. They are out of control. They have never been in control. Their function in society is being served as intended, as designed. They do not serve you. They never have. They never will. They are there to oppress you. They are there to coerce you. That is their role. So knock it off with the bootlicker shit. Knock it off with the fear mongering. They do not face much, uh, much death. They do not mu face much assault. They do not face much injury. In fact, the majority of their injury is self-inflicted at this point. So pass. Shout out to my hometown of London and tried an anti-gang unit trying to ruin me and my friends' lives for no reason. Dude, Caleb. Yeah. Yep. Fucking Robert Peel. Fucking it up for the rest of the world. That's also where we get the term pigs, by the way. It may be slightly apocryphal. We're not entirely sure. Um, but there is no other competing explanation for the origin of the term pigs for police. It seems to have been born of Sir Robert Peel and his obsession with the breeding of, I think, Berkshire pigs. I forget which one. Um, Tamsworth. Tamsworth pigs. Um, yeah. The original corruption. And yes, Viva, police are the violent criminal gang of the oligarchy. So, yeah, fuck the police. In fact, fuck the police. Let the man and say, say it himself. Um, fuck the police. What you got, brother? Weather. I like it. I like it. Um. Salvador Police Academy featuring Steve Gutenberg. Maybe a bootlicker, my you. Dude, there's lots of copper uh, propaganda. Dude, there's tons of propaganda out there. Fucking so much of fucking what Hollywood puts out is propaganda. Look at all that shit. Oh, Caleb, the fact that you fucking know Anti-Flag. Dude, I love Anti-Flag. They're good boys. Um, I love some of their old stories, too. Um, yeah, the, um, the eviction house party uh, story.
from uh, from Anti Flag. I, I it is amazing. They were getting evicted, so they had uh, one last house party, and um, it got so rowdy that they uh, knocked the um, uh, they knocked the gas uh, the gas water heater I think off its base, um, and there was a gas leak that ended up getting lit by uh by one of the you know party participants probably a fucking cigarette knowing a bunch of punks they uh shifted the house off its foundation so they were getting kicked out of the house and they ended up leaving the house <laughs> and it fucking the house was totaled they fucking shifted the house off the foundation dude a anti-flag fucking party back in the day i i love those boys um yeah Public, you're gonna die, gonna die, gonna die for your government, die for your government. That shit. Oh, I love them. Yep. Um. Oh shit! All right, excellent. Oh uh, no, nope. we got fucking, we got fucking different, fucking yeah. Che fucking drop yeah. Che dropping that. Excel dropping that. We got paragraphs in chat. Fucking yeah, dude. I I anti flags to that list for me. Pennywise, anti flag, no effects. Like that's that's sort of like my like the era I came up with. Right, so like I hearken back to some of the older punk, right? Like I mean, the Clash is fucking brilliant, right? But um, I came up with that sort of era of punk. That's that's where I I matured a little bit. I, Fugazi was slightly before my time, but was still going while I was coming up. Um, do public? I want like I want fuck authority played at my my funeral. Right, like whatever party funeral. I don't want to do traditional funeral, but like when I'm, I'm when when somebody's celebrating me and getting fucked up to celebrate Kai's life, dude. Somebody better play fuck authority. That shit made me. Um. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Um. Fuck authority, my own way. Um. Yeah. Fucking. There's a. I, dude, fuck public. It still speaks to the lyrics. Still speak really well. Um, hey Omni, how about you address the core, the root issue, the inequity, inequality uh, of capitalism. California and other states face gang shoplifting, which increased funding for police services would, uh, to combat this situation. If police aren't used, who should society use? He here's a crazy idea. I know, right? It's fucking batshit galaxy brain territory. But here's an idea. Did you know that the number one corollary for theft is poverty? Did you know that the number one corollary for criminality in general is poverty crazy i know right it's almost like capitalist modality leads to uh leads to a system rife with inequality and that inequality leads to situations which people take advantage of because they have to dead kennedys are fucking solid too salvador good call dead kennedys are fucking banger yeah Oh, this is fucking wow. You're getting philosophical. No, I'm getting economic. And I suppose all things can be traced back to philosophy if you really want to. But no, I'm talking economics and psychology, in fact. See, I, this is a crazy thing, I know, right? Um, 
public, that's why I love it. Because p punk isn't about the music. I mean, I know punk would like, it's about the music. It's not about the music. It's about the lyrics. It's about the intent. It's about the intensity. It's about the message, right? Like that's what's good about punk. It's just fucking pick up a guitar and fucking, ah, it doesn't fucking matter. Scream. It doesn't fucking matter if you can't sing. It doesn't matter if you can't play. Punk is about the fucking message. It's about how you feel and what you're experiencing. That's that's what I always loved about punk was fucking that. Caleb, take care of yourself. Um, uh, you're you're quite welcome, Caleb. Um, Thursday night show, which is probably Friday morning for you, is probably the best be, uh, best bet for you. Um, because my like earlier show is probably difficult for you to catch. Um, so yeah, like Friday morning, probably either way. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for keeping an open mind, Caleb. Take care of yourself. Um, yeah, that's, that, that was always my deal. I just, it was about the fucking message, man. Oh, okay. Well, then Caleb, I look forward to seeing you. Oh, Caleb, if you want, join the Discord community. Um, we're active. Um, exclamation Discord. Um, and yeah, we can, if you have questions or whatever, there's like show announcements and shit like that. Um, yeah. Either way. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy your weed. Enjoy your weeds. You're going to go smoke your weeds. Um, <clears throat> non-binary. Yeah, public. I, I never did warp to her. I never did warp to her. I, I was never into like that sort of thing. Like if 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 you don't have a small venue or like a, a like a house party show or like a backyard show, like I wasn't interested. I didn't I dude, I I ruined raves for myself by going to a desert massive. There were like 30,000 people at the massive and I went and I never went to another rave again. I was like that's that's the death of raving. The fact that that exists. I was like, that's the death of raves. So, yeah. I feel you. Um, all right. Anyway, back. Um, have you heard British stuff like conflict or crass? I don't think I've heard crass, but I've heard conflict. Conflict is, uh, like South London anarcho punk sort of thing, right? Like early eighties. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard conflict. I don't think I've heard crass though. Um, yeah. No, look up crass. Interesting. All right. I'll check them out. I'll check them out. Um, 77 to 84. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, God, I love pictures of punk shows, though. I love pictures of punk shows. Uh, you can smell that photo. You can smell that photo. I love it. That's 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 what punk fucking looks like. That's what, what punk fucking smells like. That's what punk tastes like. Oh fuck yeah. Jesus, bunch of members. Holy shit. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven fucking former members. Holy fuck, man. Alright. 
what non-binary? The picture or the fucking show? Like the the. Oh, here you go, non-binary. Oh, yep. Cool. Thanks, Tom Biner. I'll take a look. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Whatever. You know, whatever, whatever weird language I'm garbling up. Um, who's fucking who's live? Who's live? Radhom's got 30. He's doing fine. Let's do Dan. Oh, Dan's doing a fucking... All right. We're going to raid Dan. I'll take some of the UK folk over to his UK folk. Um, Come on. At least get to 40. There's 50 in here. Get to 40. Um, uh, fucking... Uh, wait, hang on. I, I know I saw something. Uh, the Dictators, yeah, they're fucking 70s, uh, New York punk band. Um, hey, the HBIC, thank you. Uh, you know, thank you for the compliment. Um, yeah, fucking, uh, Rumble. Yeah, yeah, the, the Dictators were like a, a 70s fucking New York punk band. Um, yeah, I have heard of them. I have heard them. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna raid over to Dan for a bit. Uh, I gotta, I gotta fucking eat. I need food. Um, either way, thanks for hanging out. Late night stream. Um, oh, rock on. Short three hour stream. Dude, three hours is pretty much, that's, a, that's like my minimum stream length. It's three hours basically. Yeah. Um, I try and keep it three hours or above. All right, y'all. Take care. We'll move this over to Dan's.